Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to push an object in your game with animations. So you can do this in any way, so you can like push a bookshelf out of the way to show a secret tunnel or something like that. But in today's video I'm just going to be doing it with the default cube that comes with Unreal. So let's get straight into it. So for the animations that we're going to use I've imported to and then retargeted it to the Unreal mannequin. So if I just open these up and show you, there's some very basic straightforward animations that we're going to use. So we have the pushing one here, which like I say it's a bit straightforward because the head is kind of a little bit in front of the hands there, but this is just to get the job done. And then an idle one there which is just a pose, which if you're not moving you'll be like that. So we'll close that and get right into it. So what we're going to do first is right click and then create a blueprint class and the blueprint class will be an actor. And I'm going to call this movable cube underscore bp like that you can call this whatever you want make sure it's just along with what you're doing so it's easier to find later on so then open that up straight away and what we're going to do is just import a static mesh so up here add component in the top left hit that and then search for static mesh we're going to get the bottom one there you can call this whatever you want so i'm just going to call this cube as that's what we're going to be moving and the static mesh we can choose whatever we want and i think i'm just going to get the one meter cube there like that and then probably change the scale up to Two. so I'll just double it in size like so and hit compile straight away on that and the next thing I'm going to do is straight away go back to add components and we're going to search for physics constraint so the second one there we're going to add a physics constraint there you can name it whatever you want and what I'm going to do is just leave this in the middle of the cube like that and then to enable the physics on this what we're going to do is go down here under component name one we're just going to open this and a component name we want this to be the exact same as our static mesh so as I've just called this cube I'm going to do that but you want this to be the exact same. So if you change this name to something, make sure to re rename this down here. As you can see, this is now working. So if I move this out, you can see a red line there and it's highlighting the cube as that's what we have the physics constraint on. So I just move that back into the center there like that. And we're gonna scroll down here, still on the physics constraint, scroll down until you get to the linear limits. And what I'm gonna do is just tick all of these to be free. Well, not all of them, sorry, just the X and the Y. And what this means is this is where you want it to be able to move. So I want to move it on the X axis and the Y axis, but not the Z. So if you want to move on the Z as well, just put free for Z too. Or if you only want to move it on the X, only tick X. You get the idea. It's just as simple as that. Then obviously, if you also want to be able to move it diagonally, tick all of them as well. So then under angular limits, what I'm going to do is set all of them to locked. And with it being on free, this means that it will be able to swing from side to side. So like tip over and stuff like that. So obviously, if you want it to keep it as that, tick free but I don't so I'm going to put it on locked for this so if we go back on the cube here and search for linear dampening or here it is here if we get linear dampening and set this to something like three four or five or something along those lines that'll be a lot better as the linear dampening is basically how slidey the object is so obviously if it's on like ice or something you'd want it to be quite low so point one was good but if it's on like wood or a hard surface like that where it's not easy to slide you want it to be set higher up so the higher it is the less slidey the surface will be. And now what I'm going to do is make it so you can only push it on certain axes, so you can't push it like diagonally. So if you're stood here, you won't be able to push it that way, you won't be able to push it this way and that way, so forward or side to side. So obviously if you want to have it diagonal, leave it as this, but if you don't, then follow what I'm doing here. So what I'm going to do is again add a component, and what we're going to do is just get a box collision. I'm just going to rename this straight away to the Y axis collision like that or something along those lines so you know what it is and what it does and we're just going to scale this up so that's x sorry so if we scale up this way along the y axis you basically have to be in this box collision here to be able to push it on this axis so if i make it let's say that big you have to be here to be able to push it so i might just make it the whole side there so that whole face there if you are in this area or this area here you can push it on the y axis and then again I'll do the same but for the X so if I just duplicate that like so then obviously just invert this so it's on the X instead of the Y so there we go that's now symmetrical like that so we have it so we can only push it on the X and Y axis like so and then what we're going to do next is just go straight to the event graph here and we're going to delete these three nodes here that are here by default and then let's just select the Y axis collision up here right click in the event graph and get begin overlap and we want add on component begin overlap under the collision of the box collision there I'll move this up here and then off of other actor and come off of this and cast to our character or anything that you want to be able to push the object 
So for me, that's just the third person character. So it's obviously whatever you have, this could be first person, but just cast to your character like so. And then we're just gonna get a reference to the cube. So drag and drop that in from up there. Come off of this and just set simulate physics. We want to tick simulate like that. So basically when we are in that area, that box collision, you're going to be turning on the physics. So you want to make sure that by default you have simulate physics turned off on the cube, which it should be anyway. And then what we're also going to do for the animation is set a boolean here. So if we open up our third person character, so content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character. If we just quickly hit plus variable there, create a new variable, I'm going to call this is pushing question mark or something along those lines and then compile that. By default, it should be false, so unticked and go back to the cube and we're just going to come off of as third person character set is pushing and we're going to set that to true so tick it there like that and that's that part done so we're going to reselect the y-axis collision box again and then now get end overlap so add on component end overlap for the box collision there and we're going to do the exact same thing so we can just copy and paste this down here so other actor cast third person character set simulate physics but now we're unticking this so it's not simulating the physics anymore and then set is pushing to false as well and then hit compile and then we just need to do this for the x axis as well so if we move this up actually i'll put a comment on this let's call this y axis collision and i'll do the same for the x so begin overlap add on component begin overlap and may as well just get the end as well add on component end overlap and then just control v on there like so other actor goes into there like this it's very simple once you know what you're doing so put that in there obviously simulate physics set is pushing don't simulate physics and set is pushing to false like that and i'll just comment this again and i'll put x axis collision like so so it's just as simple as this make sure you have it set up like this for both of the collision boxes or however many you have so if we hit compile minimize this and then test it out so if we drag this into the world we should see that this should work and drag this up a bit like that if we hit play if we go here we should see we can't really move it too much see we can a bit as we're overlapping it but it's not going diagonal if we go here we can push it that way if we go here we can push it this way and now if it doesn't work for you that's probably because your box is too heavy so to change the weight you'd go into it select cube either change the size up here or enable massing kilograms there and just change it down here so mine's 100 which means i can push it so either change the mass or change the linear damping as well so i just show you this again hit play i can move it this way and i can move it this way so that's basically the base part of it done so this is the actual pushing so now we'll move on to the animation side so we're going to do this in the animation blueprint so as i'm using a mannequin i already have one so i'll go mannequin animations third person anim bp like this if i go back to anim graph and then state machine so default we have this here so i want this to come off of idle and run so if i just drag an arrow off of this and add a state i'm going to call this push idle like this and then drag an arrow back into the idle run and then i'll drag another arrow off of the push idle add another state and just call this push forward like so and then once again drag an arrow back to the push idle like that and we're simply just going to put in the animations here so the push idle i'll put in my push idle animation that i've got and i do the same for push forward put a push forward animation in there like so so now we'll do the transitional nodes so if we do the one going from idle run to push idle first, this wants to be just simply if we are pushing and the speed is below a certain value. So if we go to the event graph first, we need to be able to get the variable is pushing. So if we come off of set speed, simply cast to third person character or just whichever character you're using. Object is obviously get player character like so. As third person character, we're simply just going to get is pushing question mark like that and then what we're going to do is right click and promote to variable and call this the exact same so is pushing question mark like that and just plug that in so you're setting it there like that so we can now use it here as well so if we hit compile you may get some errors like that but that's just because we haven't finished the transitional nodes yet so we go back to that transition and we get is pushing so get is pushing like that i'm just going to drag off of this and get an equal equal boolean so equal boolean like that and we're just going to tick this to true so if pushing it was true we can enter that transition there like that so if we just set this and copy it go back to the graph and then go to the transitional node from push idle 
to idle run put that in there hit control v plug that back in there as well but this time we want to untick it so if we aren't pushing we're just going to go back to that state so it is pushing set to false can enter transition like that so now if we go to the push idle to push forward transition we're going to basically do the same thing so if we copy and paste that in again is pushing set to true but now we're going to come off of this equal equal boolean and now we're going to get an and boolean as well and boolean like that and this we want to look at the speed so down here you should already have a speed variable so we drag and drop that in there get speed drag off of this and we're going to get a float is greater than or equal to a float i'm going to set this to something small like 10 so basically if the character is moving then it will do this so plug that into the and boolean there and then plug the and into the transition there so basically if you are pushing and you are moving forward then it will enter the transition and then if we just copy this paste it into the transition mode from push forward back to push idle like this plug that in now we'll just get rid of this greater than or equal to and have it as a less than or equal to so a float is less than or equal to plug that in there and this time we'll set it to something like five like that so if we are pushing a box and our speed is less than five so we aren't moving we're going to enter that transition so now if we hit compile we should have no errors as we have it all set up like this so it should look something along these lines the idle run goes to push idle and the push idle goes to push forward and they all go back like so so now if we minimize this and hit play to test it again we should see that if we're in this box we have that so we'll see it stopped as we moved out of it so if we're in the box it plays that animation there the pose and if we're moving forward it plays a push animation of moving it forward now we've come out of it and it hasn't stopped playing the animation yet so that is an issue we have with the transition going back so that's an issue that we'll have here so that's because we haven't got one going from push forward to just go back to bot idle run so if we do that so drag an arrow from push forward to idle run double click the transitional node there and simply just get is pushing so get is pushing drag off of this and get an equal equal boolean like so and then leave it unticked and put that in there so if we aren't pushing the cube it can go back to that state so we hit compile test this again if we walk into it we go we have that one which isn't great but that's just the animation and if we're moving we then have that animation and if we stop we go back to our normal animations so this looks perfect like that and that works out perfectly as well so we can move the box and when we are moving it we have an animation playing as well so I think that'll be it for this video we've done everything we wanted to do we've set up a movable object which we can push and when we are pushing it we can play an animation as well and when we're not pushing it but we're in this state to push we just have an idle animation too so thanks so much for watching I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like subscribe down below so thanks so much for watching I'll see you in the next one